Okay, our next presenter is Rosemary Drake from TAP Biosystems. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and, to, and to talk to you today. So I'm going to be talking about some of the um, potential solutions to some of the issues which have been raised earlier in, in today's talks about um, scale up, about automation, about manufacturing, about cost of goods, because um, I think that some, some of the tools that we've developed might be very relevant to the issues that you are facing. Right, wrong way up, possibly. Um, so who is uh, TAP Biosystems? Well, we are a company of around about 180 people based near Cambridge in the UK. I like to say the original Cambridge and around about 30 people in the US. Uh, that's our, our headquarters in Wilmington. Those are service support and sales guys. And what we do is we develop tools and technologies which are all focused around cell culture processing. And over the years, and uh, we have been supplying systems for automated cell culture for over 23 years. And those um, systems are installed worldwide. They're being used by companies, whether that's large pharma, biotech, research institutes, they're using them to improve their productivity. It might be you have a manufacturing focus, an R&D focus, or a, de uh, a development focus. And the areas in which um, our customers are predominantly found, they're doing um, cell-based screening, they're doing bioprocess development, that was novel uh, biologic therapies, such as monoclonal antibodies, and we also have a focus of using those same tools, those same technologies, but focusing in on people who are developing novel therapies in regenerative medicine. And so I'm going to um, talk about um, a couple of systems which are integrated, automated cell culture systems. So to try to describe what you're seeing up there, what you have here is the equivalent of a biological safety cabinet. That's a hood. So this is an aseptic, clean environment and within that space, there is a robot. And what's that robot doing? It's doing all of the processing that a person would normally do sitting at a hood in a bunny suit, all dressed up. So it can do feeding, seeding, media exchange. It can do the passaging, by which I mean the dissociation using an enzyme trypsin. It can do cell counting, and it can monitor cell growth. So what you have is you have something which does all of those processes. And because it's a robot, it will do it very consistently. It will do it very reproducibly. It will do the same time after time after time. So that's a terrific tool for investigating and developing um, your process and your protocols for cell culture. Uh, on this side here, what we have is an integrated incubator. So in that incubator, you can have up to 90 different cell lines. It's 90 flasks. These are T flasks, uh, which could include the higher capacity um, corning um, hyperflask or other, other types of flask. And so in, in principle, you could have a very large experiment which you could perform systematically. But in fact, um, those, that system we have developed it and designed it and spent at least two years testing, proving, and documenting that that can be used um, to maintain and expand patients' autologous cells. And what we've shown is that within here, this um, environment is 100 times cleaner, more clean than the grade A clean room in terms of particulates, both when the robot is working and when it's stationary. And what we've also done is extensive testing to say what is the risk of contamination or cross-contamination between different flasks, different patient cells in the same system concurrently. So only one flask and only one patient cells are processed at any one time, but they are processed concurrently. And we have shown that in fact, that that risk is, is, is vanishingly small to minimal. And we've got, a, uh, as I said, we've got two years of data um, which we can use to help companies who are interested in implementing this technology uh, for developing their cell therapies. And to date, we've got a, an installation in, in a university that's pronounced Loughborough University in the UK. They've done a lot of work looking at the, the cost, looking at 
process development, process optimization for cellular therapies. Cook Myocyte has one of those systems installed and is going through validation at the moment. That's again for an autologous cell therapy. And there's a company in the Czech Republic <coughs> called Prime Cell, which is also implementing one of those systems. So what it can do is enable you to have a much more cost-effective approach to developing autologous cell therapies. If you look at clinicaltrials.gov, you'll find 50% of all the clinical trials listed are autologous cell therapies. So although we'd love to have allogeneic cells, I think autologous cell therapies are going to be with us for quite some time. So not only does that give you um, a labor reduction, it gives you the benefit of a consistent, reproducible process, and it will provide a full audit trail. It will be doing the checking um, of, uh, and, and, and creating that audit trail for you so you're not writing everything down. And um, in addition, I don't know if you know, but a five-minute procedure, say, for example, a change in media in a hood, will actually take around 40 minutes by the time you've done the clean down and by, by the time you've documented. So it's really providing consistency, quality, um, as well as a significant labor saving, and that will translate directly into cost of goods. Um, this is um, a, a system which has been around for 23 years, is very widely deployed, over 100 systems worldwide. And this is a system which, is which has the same design principles. It doesn't have an integrated incubator. Um, you would bring your roller bottles from uh, a warm room, roll them up, load them onto the system, and it would do all the processing. So this is a batch machine which is able to um, to do all of the cell culture manipulations associated with people who are uh, developing um, therapies using cells growing in roller bottles. And so this has been very extensively used for vaccines, for therapeutic proteins, and also for an allergene allergeneic cell therapy scale up. As I said, there are more than 100 of those which have de been deployed in GMP facilities um, worldwide. And um, this just lists some of those uh, well-known names, some of the therapies uh, which have been uh, grown. So at one point, Merck had 10 of these systems and were making all the virus cell vaccine used in the US. And this is something which is used by Advanced Biohealing to um, grow the fibroblasts, and then those are, are put into a scaffold. So this is a production system which is very well established and enables you to take if you happen to inherit a lab-based process based on roller bottles, you can translate that directly without any change to the process or the protocol into something which is suitable for manufacturing scale up. And as I said, all of the chickenpox vaccine in the US is made, was made on 10 of those systems. So I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other products that we, that we have, which might be relevant to um, stem cell research or development. Um, and this is a system uh, for making, it's a tissue engineering technology that we have licensed from um, tissue engineers in the UK, from a UK university. What it enables us to do is to create a cell containing tissue made from collagen without the use of any cross-linkers or any chemicals at all. So we can directly, simply, in less than an hour, make a 3D tissue from collagen. And that's the body's own structural protein for those of you um, who don't know. We've, we've commercialized that um, for uh, drug discovery and screening. This is always be also being taken forward into a, th a cellular therapy, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. This is um, a system which we developed for cell banking. What it enables um, to be automated is the filling of cells or our other products, like, for example, Botox, directly into racks of vials. So this will do all of the filling um, it will take a rack of, of cryovials, multiple different um, formats are possible, and it will fill those. It will do a complete rack in less than two minutes. And that's really important if you want to um, create a cell bank and protect those cells from exposure to the cryoprotectant. And this is a, um, a novel technology where we are able to mimic at a small scale, so this is 10 to 15 milliliters all of the functionality of a large bioreactor. So it's got sparging, gassing, um, uh, it's got a built-in pH, dissolved oxygen sensors, so it can feed, it can sample, it can do all of that for 48 or 24 vessels in parallel, and that's been used to look at media optimization in a blood farming um, project. 
Um, we also, in addition to the products, and those are example products only, we also do custom automation and development work, including for, for well-known names such as organogenesis. We've also done some work with a very interesting uh, company developing de a dendritic cell therapy, where what we looked at was their complete process. We looked at the cost effectiveness, we looked at the scale up, we looked at how to streamline and, and, and suggested product improvements, <coughs> including a complete analysis of all the facilities, the resource, the labor, in order to come up with something which would be more amenable to scale up, and we're just waiting for the end of their phase one clinical trial um, before we, we go to the next stage and start to take those concepts into hardware. But these are sort of worked examples that might be relevant to you. And we're also a partner on the DARPA-funded blood farming project, which was led by Cellgene, where we were looking at tools and processes to optimize and scale up the manufacture um, of red blood cells um, from progenitor cells. So that's kind of a flavor of the sorts of projects that we get involved in. So we both develop products, uh, which would be customized for your use, but we also do completely custom um, developments. And I'm now going to talk a little bit more about this, um, the, the, the platform for tissue engineering. You've heard about two or three approaches already today, uh, and, and this is a, is, a, is, a, is a somewhat different one in the sense that what we're doing is we are using a scaffold, we're using the body's own structural protein collagen, and what that has is, is the, uh, when you use it as a hydrogel, it's extremely weak. It's, about, it's got all the structural integrity of jello. Um, so how do you make that into a tissue? Well, what was discovered by somebody, was a, a, a tissue engineer in London called uh, Professor Robert Brown, was that if you took uh, a collagen hydrogel and you put it in contact with something that was absorbent, so he was using lab paper, uh, paper towels and moved on to Watman's number one filter paper. But if you did that, what would happen is some of the liquid would come out of the hydrogel into the, into the, into the absorbent material. What that did was in one very simple and direct step was it concentrated the cells and the collagen. So you went from cells which are encapsulated in a collagen, a very weak collagen hydrogel at about 0.5%. What happened then was you ended up with a physiologically relevant collagen concentration of around 8 to 10 percent of collagen and the cells were still in there with high viability and what that does is gives you the ability to engineer and tune that tissue so that you can then put cells in of your own choice and as i said we've in part um, commercialized that for drug discovery screening and a lot of big pharma are using it for a wide variety of cells so there's a very long list of publications there's probably about 20 or 30 different types of cells and tissues which have been made but this is an example from our collaborators at the Institute of Ophthalmology and Moorfields Eye Institute is uh, Eye Hospital which is probably the premier one in Europe oops and this is showing uh, this is the normal human Cornea. So what you've got is a stroma there with the fibroblasts and you've got a stratified epithelial layer on top. This, here's one made using the raft process. So these are uh, limbal fibroblasts here, the limbus uh, from the cornea, uh, seeded on the surface with um, epithelial cells and what that forms over a period of time in culture is a stratified epithelial uh, layer on the surface and that gives you something which is very like in terms of the biomarkers um, in terms of structure but also in terms of function if you wound it this will heal if you wound it multiple times it will continue to heal so this is being taken forward into a first in man safety study in 2014 for a couple of patients who's got limbal epithelial um, stem cell failure as a result of for example chemical or thermal burns. These are just some um, examples of custom projects to give you a feel for the scope and the scale of what we do. So this is a very large system for storing millions of samples. It's so-called UK Biobank, um, minus 80 automated storage uh, with an expected lifetime of around at least 30 years. The challenge there is you can't just defrost a fridge. 
<laughs> at any point at all. A lot of challenges in there. Uh, this is a microfluidic space uh, patch clamp system where we took somebody's technology and we built all the automation around it. And this is a, a, a picture from the DARPA blood farming um, project. Um, but looking forward, what we can see is what this industry needs is we, we've talked about the solution for the autologous cell therapy. This is the solution which is in development for those people who are interested in large volumes of cells for allogeneic therapies. So you're probably all familiar with the kind of stack labware as shown here, which is really, um, if, you, if you can't persuade your cells to grow in a large scale bioreactor, this is kind of where you are. And so what we are um, <coughs> developing is a system for the full automation and manipulation of these stack, so-called stack labware. So conventional stacks will give you maybe 40 layers. There's something novel from Corning, which, uh, which they're developing, uh, which is the hyper stack, and that's 120 layers. Um, it's about that high. And that would really enable you to achieve um, enough cell production to meet those very ambitious targets where you've got a very, very large population um, to serve. So we'd be very interested to talk to people who are uh, looking at scaling up, and we would say it's never too early to think about manufacturing, because I think as everybody's explored already, if you haven't got a cost-effective route to production, you don't have a therapy, you probably don't have a company long-term. Um, I think all of that today that we've heard, whether it's around the regulatory, the pays, the reimbursement, you really, really need to think very early about how are you going to manufacture this therapy. So if there's one take-home message uh, that I'd like you to remember about TAP is that we've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, and so you can learn from what we've done in the other industry sectors, the biologics, about um, how to manipulate and manage cells at a larger scale. And so uh, this is just a, a snapshot of, of what we do. And uh, we'd be very happy to talk to you. Uh, I've got a couple of colleagues here. We've got um, a tabletop outside. And we'd be delighted to, to talk to you and just discuss about what your challenges are around automation, scale up, manufacturing, whether it's stem cells for research or discovery platforms, tissue engineering, because I think Raft is a terrific platform for, for cell delivery to the patient or for more custom projects. So thank you very much for your time and attention.